it really humbles us to realize that there is someone that could be sitting beside of us that could be hungry on the weekends and us would, we would have no clue. So I think we get as much out of it, spiritual nourishment, if you will, as they get physical nourishment out of it. I know I do. What we do here at the pantry is we, are, we open our doors every Wednesday. We have our foods that are divided between the, like the main person in the, in the household, subs, uh, extra adults that are in the household, and then the children, you know, boxes, food boxes for the children in the family. And um, then also what's in our main room is extras that we are given by River City's Harvest. We really depend on, on them every Wednesday to give us these extra items that we can give out to our families. It's, it's an interesting process. It's ongoing. It's actually a lot of work and actually a lot of fun. Uh, you get some wonderful people that come in. Interacting with them is, is, is just super. Uh, there are people that will come in and, and they ask for prayer and we'll take them in a room away from everyone else and sit down with them and, and talk and pray. Donations from the congregation is what is keeping this pantry open year after year is, is uh, the congregational support and, um, and our volunteers. I mean, we're all volunteers, but are mainly the volunteers who are helping out are from our congregation. At Pipewell United Methodist Church, there are four ministries that are primarily geared towards addressing the issue of food insecurity. Uh, we have a blessing box that is assembled and is often uh, filled and emptied in a very quick period of time. Uh, we have the uh, backpack ministry that our youth oversee and they do a wonderful job with that. We have a food pantry uh, that is uh, manned by members of our mission team. And then we have a, a partnership with a group called Community Kitchen uh, that utilizes our facilities and a number of our folks volunteer to help provide for needs of our people in our community. Well, in coming in and speaking with Chris and, and with Willard about what, what programs were of need, right, of support, um, we decided to establish a program called Buckets for Backpacks. And what that does is allows our girls to be, a, be involved in the community, um, contribute while they're playing. Buckets for Packpacks is a way for every field goal that they make in a game, I donate a dollar. We track that over all of the games for the course of the season and, and we support uh, public schools and kids who are in need on the weekends for food. Kids, so no kids go home hungry. Um, on Wednesday nights, all of our youth group friends, we get together and we put together backpacks for um, kids that might need extra food on the weekends. And our students are very involved with this. They're involved with gathering the food. They're involved with putting it to, putting the backpacks, assemb actually assembling those every Wednesday night. And then I simply just go and deliver them. Um, but it's very student driven, even from the way that it's funded. Um, you've heard a little bit about partnership with back Buckets for Backpack. And it's actually helped us not only increase how many backpacks we can do, but what goes in them. And um, we're able to, to really beef it up and, and make it a nice thing that we're able to deliver for these students for the weekend. Look for partnerships wherever available. Uh, we don't do everything that we do around here by ourselves. Uh, we get assistance from God's Pantry, and Christian Appalachian Project, and Buckets for Backpacks. And so for all the things that we do around here, we don't do them by ourselves. Community Kitchen is a major player, but again, that's working together with others to magnify the impact that we're able to have mm -hmm. beyond what we could just do by ourselves. You can't learn unless you have a full belly. You're not gonna, you can't be functioning properly unless you know, your basic needs are met. 